Uh, here in this example, if y is the middle proportion between x and z, prove that xz over y plus y multiplied by y plus z equals x over x plus y. Because y is the middle proportion between x and z, so x, y, and z in continued proportion. So x over y equals y over z equals m, and from that, y equals zm and x equals zm to the power of 2. Then write the left hand side, which is xz over y multiplied by y plus z. So we're going to write instead of x, <coughs> you are going to write here zm to the power of 2 multiplied by z over. And instead of y, you write zm multiplied by zm, this y here is zm plus z. I recommend to expand, then take a factor. So at the top here, we have zm squared multiplied by z. It's going to be z to the power of 2, m to the power of 2, over. Multiply zm by zm. It's going to be z to the power of 2, m to the power of 2, plus zm multiplied by z is going to be z to the power of 2m. Then take a factor uh, at the bottom here. So write the top as it, which is z to the power of 2m to the power of 2 over. We have here z squared and z squared. So write z raised to the power of 2. Then we have m to the power of 2 and m. Then you are going to take m. Then open brackets. You are left with m here plus because i divided zm to the power of 2 divided by z to the power of 2m. So dividing them leads to get m and z to the power of 2m divided by z to the power of 2m equals 1. Then here we have at the top z to the power of 2 and z to the power of 2 at the bottom. Cancel them out. And we have m to the power of 2 at the top and m down. So cancel this m with the power of 2. You are left with m over m plus 1. This is the left-hand side. Let's go to the right-hand side. The right-hand side is x over x plus y. So write instead of x, write zm to the power of 2. <coughs> oh. This, <coughs> this x here, zm to the power of 2, plus y is zm. That will be equal to zm to the power of 2 over. zm to the power of 2 plus zm, so take zm as a factor because z is repeated in both of them and we have m to the power of 2 and m so zm is the common factor and then divide zm to the power of 2 divided by the factor we uh, took which is zm so here we have m at the bottom here m and zm divided by zm equals 1 then cancel z and z, and we have m to the power of 2 at the top and m at the bottom. So cancel m with the power of 2. We ended up with m over m plus 1. So the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. The opposite figure is the curve of the function f of x equals m minus x squared. Uh, if o a is 4 centimeters, here is 4 centimeters. And the function is given as m minus x squared. Okay. I want to get the value m. So this point m here. Uh, sorry. Uh, how can we get the point m here? And we have the point a here. The point a is because OA is 4 units. So this point is 0 and 4. But this point lies on y-axis. So we are going to pass uh, the two coordinates 0 and 4 in this function. 
And I recommend you to write this function as y equals n minus x squared. So this point lies on the curve. So this point satisfies the relation 0 and 4 plumbus to the curve. So we are going to write instead of x, 0, and instead of y, 4. Okay, so write 4 equals here m minus 0. So m equals 4. So uh, the function here is going to be y equals uh, m, so write 4 minus x squared instead of this m. So y equals, instead of m, you write 4 minus x squared. Uh, I want to get the two coordinates of the two points, B and C. So the point B lies on X axis. So this point is X and 0. Okay. So we are going to substitute instead of this uh, point here with this point plongs to the curve. So we are going to substitute X and 0 in the relation. So you are going to, instead of y zero here equals four, and then instead of x x, it's actually written. So we have zero equals four minus x squared. Move it to the next side. So x to the power of two equals four. From that, x equals positive or negative two. So this point B is going to be two and zero, and the point C is negative two and zero. Do you know why? because the curve is symmetric. The curve is symmetric about y-axis. So this point is z 2 and 0. Uh, so this point is going to be negative 2 and 0. I want to find the area of the triangle whose vertices are A, B, and C. So I want to get the area of this triangle. The area is half times base times height. So here, the area equals a half. The base, here we have two units and here we have two units. So it's half times four times and the height of this triangle is four units. So that is going to be eight square units. That's it. Uh, let's have a look at this question here, f, the function f of x is five to x <clears throat> minus a. And the function rx is x minus two. And we have an information given, f of 1 plus r3 equals negative 7. So I want to get f of 1. f of 1, so to find f of 1, put the value here, f of 1 instead of x, write 1. So it's going to be 5 times 1 minus a. So f of 1 equals 5 times 1 is 5 minus a. That is f of 1. And R of uh, X is X minus 2. We have here R3. So I want to get R3. We are going to write in this function here. And instead of X, we are going to write 3. So 3 minus 2. So R3 is going to be 3 minus 2, which is 1. So F of 1 plus R3 is negative 7. F of 1... It's 5 minus a plus r3 is 1 equals minus 7. So 5 plus 1 here is 6. So 6 minus a equals negative 7. Move 6 to the next side. So negative a equals negative 7 minus 6. So negative a equals negative 13 divided by negative both sides. So a equals 13. Uh, here in this example, we have a longest to x2. Do you know what is x2? x2 is the Cartesian product of x by x. So x2 contains x2 contains some ordered pairs. So what is a here in this case? A is an ordered pair. So what is x? x is greater than 5 and less than 7. 
x is greater than 5 and less than 7. So, and x belongs to n. So what is the value of x? x in this case is going to be 6. I want to get x2. So x2 is x by x, the Cartesian product of x by x. So uh, what is the set x? x uh, equals 6. So it's 6 by 6. So x2 is going to be the ordered pair 6 and 6. So what is A in this case? A is the ordered pair 6 and 6. Because some students get confused and say, it's x to the power of 2. So it's 36. But in this case, if x to the power of 2 is 36, uh, as you uh, think, so we couldn't say an element belongs to an element. We use this sign here, this symbol here belongs to, if we have element belongs to set, set of values or set of ordered pairs, stuff like that. Uh, here in this example, I have x plus y equals x, y equals five. So what is the value of x plus y? x plus y is five. And what is the value of x, y is 5? Okay. So I want to get x squared y plus x, y to the power of 2. We can take a factor. The factor is going to be x, y. So x to the power of 2y divided by x, y equals x plus x, y to the power of 2 divided by x, y equals y. I took a factor. So uh, x, y here is 5. So it's 5 times x plus y is given as 5. So 5 times 5 is 25. OK. Uh, here, x is greater than 1 and less than 3. I want to get 3x minus 1. So x is greater than 1 and less than 3. I want to get 3x minus 1. So multiply all times here by 3. Multiply this one by 3. Multiply it by 3 here. And here multiply it by 3. And here multiply it by 3. So x multiplied by 3. X, x multiplied by 3. So it's 3x greater than 3 times 1. It's a 3. And less than 3 times 3 is 9. But I want to get... 3x minus 1. So we need to subtract 1 from the 3 terms. So we ended up with 3x minus 1. Greater than 3 minus 1 is 2. And less than 9 minus 1 is 8. So we are going to take 2 and 8. The opened interval, 2 and 8. Uh, here in this... Uh, question, if the straight line that represented the function f of x is ax plus b cuts y axis at the point 0 and 3. So we can write this function as y equals ax plus b. And this function, it's a linear function. It's a straight line. Cuts y axis at the point 0 and 3. So 0 and 3 0 and 3 satisfies the relation. So we're going to write instead of x, 0, and instead of y, 3. So 3 equals a multiplied by 0 plus b. So 3 equals a times 0 is 0 plus b, so b equals 3. So we can write, instead of b, we can write, instead of that, 3. So the function is going to be y equals ax plus 3. And f of 2 is 7. What does it mean? f of 2 is 7. When x equals 2, the value of the function is 7. f of 2 is 7. <clears throat> that means that mean when x equals 2, y equals 7. So we're going to try it instead of x2 and instead of y7 in this relation. So we're going to try it 7 equals 
a multiplied by 2 plus 3 because f of 2 is 7. So 7 equals a multiplied by 2, it's 2a two plus 3. Move 3 to the next side, so 7 minus 3 equals 2a. So 4 equals 2a divided by 2 both sides, so a equals 2. The relation which represents the direct variation between y and x. Direct variation means y in a side and x in the other side, like y equals 8x. This is a direct variation. So the first one is inverse variation. The second one uh, is a direct variation, but it's not between y and x. It's between uh, y and here we have 3 minus x, okay? And here, if we did cross multiplying, you will get here 3y equals 5x. That's right. So here, if we divide it by 3, this is the right solution. y equals 5 over 3x. So this is the direct variation here. And the last one, if you multiply it, uh, x by y across multiplication x times y equals x y equals 12 so this one is inverse variation so we're going to take the choice c if y varies as x it's a direct proportion between y and x y varies directly as x and y varies as 1 over d. So it's inverse proportion here. So y varies as what? As x over d. Direct with x and inverse with d. The standard deviation for all the values here, 5, 5, 5, 5, equals what? The standard deviation in this case is going to be zero. You know why? Because all values are equal. So the standard deviation is going to be zero. Uh, the function d of x equals x squared minus x minus 3 to the power of 2 is of what degree? So expand this uh, bracket here, this binomial. So it's going to be x to the power of 2 as it minus. Expand x minus 3 to the power of 2. So it's the first square, it's x squared, and the second square is 9. And first times second times 2, it's a negative 6x. To find the degree, simplify the function. That is going to be x to the power of 2 here, and multiply the negative by all terms here. So negative times x to the power of 2 is going to be negative x to the power of 2. Negative time is negative 6, it's a plus 6x. And negative time is 9, it's a negative 9. Then we have x to the power of 2 and the negative x to the power of 2. One cancel another out. So you ended up with 6x minus 9. And this function is of the first degree. The interval 1 and 3 closed. Difference, the set 0 and 1. The meaning of the difference to take 0 and 1 from this interval. Actually, 0 doesn't belong to this interval because this interval uh, starts at 1 and ends in 3. And zero is apart from this interval. Zero is here. So when asking about taking zero from this interval, we couldn't take it because zero doesn't belong to this interval. But we can take this one here from this interval. When taking one from this interval, uh, one is going to be opened. So it's one opened and three closed as it. Uh, the solution set of this equation 
x minus 1 to the power of 2 equals 9. So x minus 1 to the power of 2 equals 9. So x minus 1 is going to be positive or negative, the square root of 9. So x minus 1 equals positive or negative 3. Then we have two solutions for this equation. The first one is x minus 1 equals 3. The second one is x minus 1 equals minus 3. Here move negative 1 to the next side, so x equals 3 plus 1 x equals 4, and here move negative 1 to the next side, so x equals negative 3 plus 1, x equals negative 2. Uh, Fy over x minus z equals x over y equals x plus y over z. They are three equal ratios. I want to prove that each ratio is equal to 2. So how can we get this value? If you added all antecedents to each other and all consequence to each other, so you will get the same value or the same ratio. So let's add all the numerators, y plus x plus x plus y, okay, over x minus z plus y plus z equals one of the given ratio. So we have here 2x plus 2y over. Here we are going to cancel z and negative z. So we have here at the bottom x plus y. We can take two factor at the top. So it's a 2 as a factor. You have here x plus y divided by x plus y. Cancel x plus y and x plus y. So when adding all these ratios to each other, we will get 2. So each ratio equals 2. Each ratio equals 2. The first ratio equals 2 here. This ratio is equal to 2, and this ratio is equal to 2, and this ratio is equal to 2. Uh, so the second ratio here is equal to 2. So x over y, x over y equals 2. So x equals 2y, x equals 2y. I want to prove that 3y equals 2 is it. So take the third ratio here. It's x plus y over z and write two because I said and I proved that each ratio is equal to two and then do cross multiplying. So x plus y times one is going to be x plus y equals to z. Uh, write and instead of x here, write 2y. Right? And instead of x, write 2y. x equals 2y. So write and instead of x here, 2y. So 2y plus y equals 3, uh, 2z. So 2y plus y is 3y equals 2z. That's it. I have proof that 3y equals 2z. Uh, x is the interval negative infinity and 0 opened. I want to find x complement. So on the number line, x from 0 opened here and go in the direction of negative infinity. So 0 doesn't belong to this interval here. I want to complete the number line. And I didn't take 0 in this set here, in x. I didn't take 0. 0 doesn't belong to x. So we are going to take 0 in the second interval to complete the number line, which is x complement. 
So we are going to take zero and we are going to complete the number line in this direction. So we are going to take all values from zero here to positive infinity. Zero closed to positive infinity. Uh, if the sum of x minus x part to the power of two is 36 of a set of values, the number of these values is nine. I want to find the sigma, the standard deviation. So sigma equals summation of x minus x power to the power of two divided by n, the number of values. So the square root of 36 and the number of values is nine. So 36 divided by nine is four, the square root of four equals two. Uh, what is the solution set of this equation? x to the power of 2 minus 25 equals 0. Move negative 25 to the next side, so x to the power of 2 equals 25. So x equals positive or negative, the square root of 25, which is positive or negative 5. What if I ask you about the solution set of x to the power of 2 plus 9 equals 0? This one here, it's a solution equals 5. Because if you move the 9 to the next side, you will get x to the power of 2 is negative 9. There is no square root for a negative number. So here the solution set is 5. Okay, because x to the power of 2 plus 9 here, when moving the 9 to the next side, it's negative 9. And there is no square root for a negative number. Uh, the interval open 2 and 5. Union 2, we are going to add 2 to this interval because union means to add. So adding them together leads to get 2 in this interval. So 2 is going to be closed, 2 closed, and 5 closed, 2, five, two and 5 are closed. What is the solution set of this equation? It's x multiplied by x minus 1 equals 0. So here we have two solutions. The first one, x equals zero, and the second one is x minus one equals zero. Move negative one to the next side, so x equals one. So what is the solution set of this equation? Is the set zero and one. Uh, F two A equals three B equals four C. I want to get A to B to C. So look at the numbers here, the coefficients of A, B, and C. What is the lowest common multiple of 2, 3, and 4? 2, 3, and 4. The lowest common multiple is 12. So divide all of them by 12. Divide by 12. So divided by 2 is 1 and divided by 2 is 6. Divided by 3 is 1 and divided by 3 is 4. Divided by 4 is 1 and divided by 4 is 3. So A over 6 equals B over 4 equals C over 3. So what is the, uh, the ratio of A to B to C? A to B to C is going to be 6 to 4 to 3. Uh, here in this question here, the interval. The interval is 3 closed and 7 closed. We have an infinite number of numbers. They are from 3 closed to 7 closed. And all numbers between them, all real numbers between them. And this means the minus to take away. Take 3 away from this interval and take 7 away from this interval. So when we take 3 from this interval, 3 is going to be opened. And when take when we take seven from this interval, seven is going to be opened. So uh, the the interval three and seven difference, the set three and seven is going to be three opened and seven opened. Uh, from the data of the following table, answer the following questions. I have here x and y. Uh, two and six. 2 and 3, 6 and 2. As x increases, y decreases. So what is the type of variation? It's inverse variation. Uh, find the constant because it's inverse variation. So x, y equals m. 
And if you multiply the 2 by 6, you will get 12. If you multiply the 4 by 3x by y, you will get 12. If you multiply 6 by 2, you will get 12. So what is the constant? The constant is going to be 12. And what is the relation? The relation is x, y equals 12. Find the value of y when x equals 2 and uh, 2 over 5. So we're going to put instead of x, 2 and 2 over 5. So it's a 2, 2 over 5 multiplied by y is 12. 5 times 2, 10 plus 2, 12. So it's 12 over 5, y equals 12. Then multiply by 1 over 12, both sides. So you multiply by 5 over 12, both sides. To cancel this 12 over 5 here, so 5 over 12 here and 5 over 12 here. That uh, leads to get y equals 5. Uh, the interval for opened and uh, six opened intersection. What the meaning of intersection? Intersection means the common elements. So what are the common elements between the set four and six and the opened interval four and six? There is no common elements because four here doesn't belong to the interval and six doesn't belong to this interval. But here we have only four and six. So what is the intersection between them is going to be five. There is no intersection between them. The simplest measure of dispersion is the range, and the most accurate one is the standard deviation.